Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's our Savage, and today I'll be showing you guys how to take out Zamorak in Enrage Mode. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Here we go guys, this is me getting my first solo Zamorak normal mode kill that I did on stream yesterday. We had a blast, so if you guys haven't already subscribed and turned on your notifications, make sure you do that so then you can stop by the stream, have a chance to PVM with me, and then learn a lot of new stuff about the update. Also, you can join the Discord, we've been talking about the update over there, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them but during this video i'm going to be teaching you guys all the mechanics that you will need to know to get your first solo kill or even group kill as well so i will be pausing the video from this stream and talking about exactly what i'm doing and how to deal with all the mechanics so basically at the start of the fight to activate Zamorak, you want to kill all the minions around. There is one in front of each edict, so six of them. And you also want to make sure that you keep your Adren at the end so you can get into your ultimate rotation. And one other thing I would like to mention is that I am using Cinder Banes here, Weapon Poison, and then the Poison Incense Sticks, but Zamorak is not poisonable, which I did not know at the time. So you actually would like to use your other gloves, such as the Gloves of Passage if you're using melee, that would be a great alternative. So as you can see, I just finished killing all the minions. I pop Disruption Shield and Vengeance, and then I get my Elven Ritual Shard and Enhanced Excalibur as well to heal that little HP and Predator that I'm missing. And then I start to go into my rotation. I uh, use my Adren Paw after I pop Zerk, but I actually got a Relentless Proc here, which I got pretty lucky of. Then I go in to bleed my Assault into an Overpower and absolutely shred the HP here. And I also got my Grim on as well to get those extra hit caps. So as you can see, the first HP bar actually basically didn't pop up. I did it so quick, but this is kind of my method is I like to get all that DPS out uh, because you have so much Adren, you might as well. Instead of charging the Edict first, you can actually just do that damage and get that over with. Uh, but after you do that, you want to go over to one of the Edicts. I'll pop up on screen what each Edict has as a buff and what the debuff that goes along with it is. Personally, I like to start on the east side, as you can see here, and I like to uh, skip the second one on the east side and then just keep going along with it. But I haven't found the best rotation yet. If you guys want to join the stream and uh, talk about it with me and maybe I will even find something out that's better, uh, that will be awesome. And then we could uh, test that out as well. So here we go. I will uh, continue playing the video. But Basically, once you uh, stand in the Edict, you will see this orange bar fill up, and you will have to stand in that kind of fiery circle for that orange bar to fill up. But once you see it fill up and all of those uh, green particles moving, you can get out of there, and you will get filled to max adrenaline in uh, just a few moments. As you can see here, you want to drop all of your thresholds and like Dragon Claw specs. Uh, just to get all your adren out because it will be regenerated as you can see here there's a little animation there's like a green orb bursting and then you can see the adren goes to 100 but uh obviously your cooldowns do not get reset so you do want to be aware of that it'd probably be uh most beneficial to do your dark bows and dragon claws because there is no cooldown on your eof so there we go it helps a lot with damage and uh, after the first edict is activated, you can see right here after one auto attack, he will go in for a melee hit. And right here, I like to rezzo the first hit. And then there's another hit that comes after. You can see I rezzo about a 5,900 and I should have prayed melee here to reduce that 2,500 damage. Uh, but just with that rezzo right there, it makes it a lot better off. And I also do have a yak with me because obviously for these first kills, it's nice to have that support food. Uh, especially to get through it when you mess up sometimes. Then after the melee hit, you will see an orange bar going down uh, below your Adren bar, and this is basically a bomb. I just like to reflect and debilitate it, as you can see right here that I'm doing. So just around the time when the bomb is about to go off, you will see that there is a now gray HP bar that pops up, and you can see text that pops up that says Zemrak begins to draw power and energy from something within Infernus. And this is when you want to click on your action button right here, as you can see, and go into the realm to kill the witch. Otherwise, you will not be able to uh, charge up the uh, edict. So right here, you want to freedom and anticipate either or at the start so you do not get stunned by the witch and it will save you some time. 
So then you can DPS uh, pretty quickly, kill the witch. You can also use a Volum Bomb as well if you want to do a bit more damage and you're struggling. You can see I took it out pretty easily right there. And then you want to go back into the normal arena by clicking the action button once again. And then you can see now I go and charge up another edict. So here is a great time that you probably want to use devotion and use the right prayer. So right here you can see there is a red shard coming at me and that will be the range attack. And using devotion and using range prayer will be basically negate all that damage. And you can also see that when Zemrak uses his right hand, that's the range attack. And then the left hand is the magic attack. So you can see the hand switch right there. And now you'll see a fiery orb coming at you. You obviously want to switch prayers when you can or else it'll be hitting you around a thousand damage. As you can see right here with my prayer not being correct. And another thing I'm doing right now after we come out of the witch in the realm is that we're going to charge up another edict even though that we still have that gray HP bar. At this point with the boss so new it's probably best to try some of your own techniques to see what works the best because not everyone has tried things out and uh, you could maybe find something that works better than what other people are saying. So that is my suggestion for the order of the edicts. Uh, but here we go. Once the uh, the green spot right there with the orange bar above it fills up, you will get the uh, Adren coming very shortly. I should drop a Dragon Claw as I do right here. And then you can see my Adren goes from 15 all the way up to 100 once you kind of see that green burst come out of the Edict. And now we basically also want to kill these minions because it is a debuff from this Edict. But right here after the second Edict, I don't know if this is basically... Uh, based on how much speed I've gone through the fight, or if it's actually based on after activating your second edict. Uh, but around this time in the fight, it looks like I'm about a minute and 39 seconds in, you'll be forced into this uh, realm where you have to kill a demon. So it says a demon stirs from within Infernus, and you will also be stunned. So using Anticipate just before you see that symbol thrown at you, or even you can just freedom as I did there will help a lot. And then now you're in the realm with this demon, and I did choose to use a different method, which is probably not the best method, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. But you can see here in the realm, I go and kill the demon, and then there's also a symbol above my head that I go and match up. Uh, but you can see this symbol is a very similar to another symbol. You can see this one on the left side, and then the one in the middle look very similar, but actually they are a little bit different as there is a slant in the... Uh, about the top section that I did make a mistake on and I was hit for a uh, quite a lot right there and I was pretty lucky to live it but you guys want to make sure you're doing the right one and if you are in a group it will hit your group members so just be careful about that. Now for the correct method of how to deal with this mechanic is that after you're forced into the realm with the demon you actually don't really want to sit there and kill the demon you can just kite if you're using range. Uh, throw maybe a Gricko in and kill the demon, but you mainly just want to get to your symbol as fast as possible. And once you get to your symbol, you'll be forced back into the boss instance with Zamorak. And Zamorak will have the wings closed around him. So you, what you want to do is you want to stun Zamorak. If you're in a solo, you only have to stun him once. If you're in a group, I think everyone in the group, uh, however many people you have, you have to do that many stuns. And after you stun, there should be a damage that pops up that says you need to deal a certain amount, depending on how many people you have. And also the enrage probably matters as well if you're doing that. And it's almost like the Telos grip. So you do have to deal that damage after you stun for a bomb to be released. And the reason why you want to do that as fast as possible is because the longer Zamorak has those wings closed, the harder this bomb will hit you. So you can see right here, I did it a different method and decided to stay in the realm so that I... Uh, didn't take any like auto attacks from Zamrak when I went back in. And this method, it did work for me for this kill, but it certainly wasn't the best method. And the way you want to go about this is you want to rezo it, but you can see right here when I rezoed it, you actually rezo only about half of it, one of the hits, and then you still get hit for quite a lot. So I got lucky and got an 8k rezo with about a 5k hit. But another method I found to deal with this bomb is that you rezo and disruption shield so then you actually rezo one of the hits and then the other hit is negated and uh, that should be really beneficial. And then the 2400 and 1000 heal is just my uh, Sarah Brew and Sailfish. So after I did that, I actually went back into the boss instance 
and uh, we're just doing some more damage. You can see the red health bar is about to be gone, and now it is just more DPS. You can see this mechanic right here. It comes in after my second edict is activated, two minutes and 19 seconds into the fight. There is a uh, blue bar under my Adren that starts to go down very quickly. And the most important part of this mechanic is that you do not want to move whatsoever. And if you do move, the damage you take increases rapidly. So right here, you basically just want to probably reflect and debilitate and not move at all. As you can see, I do that right now and it does not take as much damage as it would if you had run away. So basically they probably just thought people would be scared and run away and it, it was kind of a, a clever trick on them to think of it as that. So I do give them props on this boss. They did such a good job. But back into the fight, you can see after that mechanic, I now have another gray HP bar. So like I said previously, you want to go back in the realm or it says in furnace. You can see right here with the text that pops up. You want to jump in there and take out the witch. You want to freedom or anticipate, as you can see right here. Also, you can vuln and you do, just do as much DPS as you can. And once you finish the witch, you want to hop out of the Infernus and then get back on Zamrak for a few hits uh, as you're running over it to your next edict that you choose. So my method was basically starting from the east side and then going along uh, besides skipping the second one on the east. Uh, once again, this did work for me, but it could be the not the best one. So the same thing's happening again. I just stood in there until the orange bar filled up. And then I got my max Dren regain, and we're just doing a lot more DPS. You can see another minion spawned in because one of the debuffs of the Edict. Now right here, guys, is another melee hit, and I'm not too sure how common these are because it was different for me every time I went into this fight. Sometimes I was seeing melee hits in spots that I wasn't seeing other times, but basically the uh, main melee hit that I've seen is that one after you activate the first edict. And then after that, it was kind of random, but you will see right here when Zamorak kind of lifts in the air as well as the wings go up, you will know that's a melee hit. And it's almost like one of those uh, Raksha melee hits where it's hard to tell if it's between a magic hit and a melee hit, and you kind of just have to throw it on as quick as you, you possibly can. Uh, you definitely could rezo this if you're quick enough. You can disruption shield, uh, reflect, debilitate. But honestly, I just went with a melee prayer, which I was able to get up in time. And it took about an 800 hit, which isn't too bad, especially if you have a yak with you. You can basically just eat through uh, these hits if you reduce them. Uh, but like I said, after the other melee hit, you will get another orange bar going down below your adren bar, which will lead you to another bomb. So if you did reflect and debilitate the melee hit, it should last you enough to uh, deal with the bomb right there. You can see it hit me in a thousand, which once again isn't too bad, and you still should be able to get through the fight. But here we are taking out the witch and i'm sent into another forest realm with the demon you can see a symbol is basically pushed over my head i get stunned so i use freedom and we're back in here with the demon i go to take it out but once again another step that you could do here is that you can just go to the symbol above your head so right here i would just run uh, to the right go into that symbol it'll bring me back i would stun zamorak and get ready ready to rezo the bomb uh, but instead i just went in and uh, killed the demon and uh, I mean, this method right here wasn't too bad where I killed him. I went back. You can see there's an orange bar above Zamrak. Uh, and basically, it's close to the bottom. So that means the bomb will do quite a lot of damage rather than if I stunned when this bar was at the top. So I stun anyways right here to speed it up just a little bit. It might have reduced a little, little bit of damage. Uh, and then I read a fiery bomb comes out at you. I've used Rezo. And let's see how much I heal. I get about a 6k heal and only take a thousand damage. So that was a really good. So we're back to DPSing. You just want to keep evolving the boss. Uh, make sure all your prayers are right. Use devotion when you can. And uh, basically just try to save some food. Make sure your prayer flicks are right. You will get another one of these cage mechanics where, once again, you do not want to move whatsoever. Use Reflect and Debilitate. You can also use Vitpot uh, where it is needed. If you guys don't have Disruption Shield, uh, that should help you guys out a lot when it comes to these fights. It will reduce your damage taken. And uh, we're back into the realm again to take out the Witch when the gray HP bar comes up. And right after we get out of the realm, we go activate another Edict. Here we go, activating Devotion again, and uh, certainly it is reducing the damage drastically, dropping a Dragon Claw spec and getting my Adren back, and uh, using Freedom to avoid some of the stuns as well. Uh, but basically, a lot of DPS right here coming in, 
And there is our fourth edict activated. You can see on the bottom right, the uh, green edicts are obviously the ones I have activated. And we get this uh, mechanic where Zamorak's wings close in and an orange bar pops up. So once again, you want to stun if you're in a solo, if you're in a group, everyone needs to stun. And then you want to deal the damage that it says. So it says 2474 to disrupt the bomb. So after you stun, you deal this amount of damage and the bomb will be released at you which you would just want to resonance or as I do here, I just debilitate. And then we're back again to DPSing the boss as much as we can and making sure our prayer is on the right thing. Here starts another mechanic. You can see there is a black cloud kind of surrounding Zamorak and you obviously do not want to stand in this as it probably has a debuff that I have not tested out yet. But I am in melee distance. I would just stand in front of the cloud and that you should be good like that and you also do need to kill the witch before you enter this realm but you cannot enter the realm before the ritual is over you can see once that uh writing on the ground goes away i enter the realm and i almost actually die here uh as there was a uh a few more hits coming in but you want to freedom anticipate uh right when you go in as you can see i did get stunned right there because i did forget you have freedom so it's nice to do that to save you some time and the faster you get the boss fight done the less food you will use uh so that's really nice to get that done now we're here charging up the uh, second to last edict and then we have to head back over to the east side and get the second one that i skipped previously uh but here we are getting some more adrenaline doing kind of the same strats as always uh it just kind of repeats itself in a way and I'm really just kind of trying to spam my defensive abilities to reduce the damage as much as possible. And we have another melee hit coming in. And I did mess up quite a bit right there. I got hit for the full hit. And you should once again uh, rezo it if you can. Put on your melee prayer. And uh, do all that good stuff to avoid any potential hits. And then you will get a bomb after every single one of those melee hits. And then we go back into the realm to get the next witch. And then after this, we can activate the last edict. Now that the last edict is activated, we just have to finish off this red HP bar and then we'll be sent into the last phase to finish off Zemrak. But we did get a uh, wing mechanic right there. So we stunned, we dealt the damage it said, and then we needed to rezo the bomb that came out. And once again, the bomb damage is significantly reduced the faster you stun Zemrak and the faster you, you deal that damage. And uh, you can see right here, we just finished off a Zamrak for the first time in normal mode. This was a huge accomplishment, especially not knowing too much and trying this out myself uh, on release day. So you can see it right there pop up and you do not get this pop up if you do it in story mode as that story mode is a lot easier. But I do suggest that you guys try it out to get a feel for the boss and that you have everything down so that you are confident and ready to take out Zamrak in normal mode and then even in rage mode after that. But you can see I got an eight minute, 24 second kill, which wasn't too bad. This is around my hard mode care pack time, which I'm also trying to improve as well. But this was significantly harder in my opinion than most bosses in this game. It's really only comparable to Telos at high end rages, I would have to say. But other than that, I think they did an amazing job on this boss. And it has been an absolute blast to do on stream with you guys. Well, that's all I have for you guys in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you did enjoy. If you guys have any questions or want to leave your opinion on the new update or any of the new items, please let me know in the uh, comment section and I'd be happy to talk about it over there. As you can see, this guy right here just spent 19 bill on the new bow, which is uh, pretty insane. But other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.